Good morning, children. So we have uh, we have been dealing with the chapter deep water, isn't it? Last week uh, we had a class where we have already started with the lesson. I hope you remember uh, what we have done last day. So. children uh, let us just have a recap of what we have learned the other day hmm? so we have met the central character who's the central character of this lesson william douglas isn't it so we have met him and we have seen uh, that uh, how experienced justice he is isn't it long years of service and an autobiographical account of him is being given here. Hmm? So, William Douglas, when he was 10 or 11 years old, at that time what happened is being given here. And before that itself, he is just telling about his aversion towards water. When that aversion started. When did that start? It started when he was 3 or 4 years old. I hope you remember. While he were, and his father was engaged in surfing, at that time a wave actually overtook him. And he got buried under water and he got terrified. So the terror was every time haunting him. So that created an aversion. And that part we have already discussed. Then what we have discussed is his, uh, the misadventure that happened to him. We have listened to the uh, misadventure that happened to him. What was the misadventure? That is when he was 11, 10 or 11 years old, his mother told him uh, to what? Uh, I mean to engage I mean to learn he, he decided along with his mother he took a decision that they learn swimming and for that he decided uh, to choose YMCA pool why because the mother often warned him not to use the uh, Yakima river why because the Yakima river is really treacherous isn't it so he was supposed to use only uh, YMCA pool and mother often reminded him isn't that we have seen all those things and then what we have come across is he joined the YMCA pool he started his practice there and as he was about to get ease with the water there in the YMCA pool a misadventure happened what was the misadventure the misadventure is that one day he was all alone there in the pool and at that time a bruiser of a boy came over there and threw him into the water at that time no one else were there no one else was there and because of that reason he just started moving down the pool and then what happened is that he planned isn't it as he was moving down he started planning what was the plan once he hit the bottom of the pool he'll make a jump and then uh, like a cock he'll reach on top of the water that was the plan and he had executed the plan but of no use isn't it yeah, he was slowly slowly moving upwards he couldn't work out the plan so uh, what happened is that he tried it thrice but nothing happened and it seems that he's going to die he almost understood what the situation is and so what he did is you could see uh, that it's better to remain calm why because anyway I'm going to die then why should I uh, go for another struggle hmm? There we have stopped, isn't it? I cross to oblivion. Oblivion, uh, I repeat, the meaning is a state in which you're not aware of what is going on all, all around you. Hmm? So I crossed the oblivion and the curtain of the life fell. It is where we have stopped the other day. Hmm? So can we continue? The next I remember was lying on my stomach beside the pool, vomiting. The chap that threw me in was saying, but I was only fooling. Someone said, the kid nearly died. Be all right now. Let's carry him to the locker room. See, what, a what was the reaction of the one who had actually thrown him into the water. Hmm? So the very, anyway, the very next thing that I remember, when I got my senses back, at that time what I understood is that I was lying on my stomach beside the pool and I was vomiting. Why? Because already uh, his stomach is full of water. He has drank a plenty of water there, isn't it? And the chap that threw me was saying, uh, see, have a look at his comment. 
but i was only fooling i was just trying to fool him huh? only that much so someone who heard it commented the kid nearly died hmm? be all right now anyway anyway the things are all right now let's carry him back to the locker room that was the comment from the one who heard it several hours later i walked home i was weak and trembling i shook and cried when i lay on my bed i hope you can understand the situation so after several hours when i i could walk on my own what i did was i just started back to my home i was really weak and trembling why because see that much struggle he had taken there under the water he has already drank a plenty of water and you can understand uh, he was just shivering i shook and cried when i lay on my bed i felt like crying aloud i don't know what to do i was terribly upset i couldn't eat anything that night see you can understand the situation of the boy isn't it how terrified he might be at that time and he couldn't eat anything all because of these things for days a haunting fear was in my heart the slightest exertion exertion the word meaning of exertion is even the slightest strain okay even the slightest strain made him feel upset making me wobbly wobbly upset the word meaning is upset itself in the knees and sick to my stomach so my stomach got upset why because i have already drank a lot of water is it a pure, a pure water that he had drank no right uh, so his stomach got upset and he was really feeling bad all sorts of pain all over the body everything all together he was utter tired i never went back to the pool i feared water i avoided it wherever i could see have a look at the change that had happened see he never went back to the pool so that is one of the uh, what after effect that happened to him because of this misadventure okay so see please note this is the question how did this experience affect him have you seen this question question number 3 this question the first, i mean one point is this thing one point is that he never went back to the pool because he heard feared water and he even feared it when, whenever sorry ah uh, whenever he could he avoided it whenever he could so that is the first after effect of this misadventure that happened to william o douglas okay so remember the first point it is he avoided water he had a fear of water he never went to that pool again and he avoided it whenever he could the first point of question number 3 and the same see one more question is there i'll show you the next the next page take the next page in the very next page you have a question question number uh 3 not 3 question number 1 uh, question number 1 why was douglas determined to get over his fear of water can you see that question the very next page you can come across that question uh, in that question also you have to uh, answer the same point hmm? remember the point is this one he had never gone back to the pool he feared water and he avoided it whenever he could that is the point okay now a few years later when i came to know the water of the cascades what is the water of the cascade here cascade is actually the waterfalls okay uh, waterfalls i wanted to get into them and whenever i did whether i was wading wading is actually walking through okay whether i was wading the teton no teton is a river there or bumping river or bathing in the warm lake of the god rocks so the terror seized him so what happened is that whatever be the water bodies that he come across he really want to enjoy the water there in the waterfalls but really sorry uh, he couldn't do so why because the terror that had afflicted him is has actually destroyed uh, his uh, what uh, himself it seems why because he couldn't enjoy being there in the water he loved to walk through the walk in the water he loved to enjoy the waterfalls there but this fear always haunted him in one way or the other so we have discussed the first point of this question how did the experience affect william o douglas isn't it it's where we have uh, stopped 
So the first point was this, that is he never went back to the pool, he feared water and he avoided it wherever he could. And the next paragraph, the, what does the next paragraph tell you? A few years later, hmm, when he just came to know about the water there in the waterfalls, what happened is that he wanted to get into them. And whenever he did, what happened was, I mean, what happened was that the terror that he had in his mind, it had seized me in the pool, uh, that had seized me in the pool would come back. So the terror that had afflicted, I mean, the terror that is haunting him regularly made him keep himself away from the water bodies. He badly wanted to enjoy the waterfalls uh, and even uh, he wanted to uh, enjoy wading there in the Teton River or else the Bumping River. And even he wished to enjoy um, bathing there in the warm lakes of the Gourd Rocks, but nothing happened. Uh, he, he did it, but actually he couldn't enjoy it. That is what he was telling. He couldn't enjoy what he really wished to. The terror that had seized me in the pool would come back. It would take possession of me completely. My legs would become paralyzed. I see horror would grab my heart. So what happened is that? Whenever he did this, whenever he approached any of the water bodies, what happened was that his legs would become paralyzed. He feel as if the legs are turning paralyzed and the icy horror will grab my heart, will control, will start controlling his heart. Okay, in that manner uh, goes the reaction of him whenever he approaches the water body. So remember that is going to be another point. Okay, so his legs will become his legs will become paralyzed and then that is yet another point remember his legs would become paralyzed and I see horror would grab his heart that is the second point for that question answer then moving on with the next paragraph this handicap stayed with me as the years rolled by in canoes on main lakes fishing for landlocked salmon so this handicap, handicap, what is a handicap? That is a terror always grabs his heart, isn't it? That handicap stayed with him even as uh, even uh, even if the years passed on. In canoes on main lakes, while I'm, I'm I just go for canoeing. What happened is that you know canoeing a small narrow boat. Hmm? So while I go uh, for fishing, that too for landlocked salmon. Salmon is a kind of fish. Uh, so while I go for that, what happened is that, or else bass fishing, bass another variety of fish, okay, bass fishing in New Hampshire, trout fishing on the uh, tissues, uh, so trout, trout is actually a variety, I mean another, a freshwater fish it is, and metolius in Oregon, fishing for salmon on the Columbia, at Bumping Lake in the Cascades, wherever I went. The haunting fear of water followed me. So whatever be the water body that he approaches, he enjoyed fishing actually. Uh, but he couldn't enjoy it right now. Why? Because uh, the fear or else the terror always controls his mind. So it is very difficult for him to enjoy fishing which he badly wants to. Hmm? So the haunting fear of water followed me. It ruined my fishing trips, deprived me of the joy of canoeing, boating and swimming. So yet another after effect remember the third question in the previous page and the first question in this page you can use this point also it ruined his fishing trips deprived him the joy of canoeing boating and swimming then he's a man who always wanted to enjoy these things but really sorry the terror that had uh, affected him prevents him from enjoying any of these things i hope the idea is clear for you so remember to include these points. I repeat, page in the, in the previous page. This particular question: How did this experience affect him? The third question. The first point is that he feared. Uh, I mean, the incident that happened in the YMCA pool. It had affected him badly. Uh, he uh, he couldn't uh, what enjoy water, isn't it? He feared water and. And he avoided it wherever he could. And the next point of that particular question is that, see, he wa badly wanted to enjoy fishing, but he couldn't. Huh? See, he had enjoyed, he wanted, uh, he has gone to different water bodies there for fishing. But what happens is that he couldn't enjoy fishing, isn't it? Huh? And you can even see, 
the third after effect being mentioned over here the third point is there i hope you have already marked it but still i wanted you to uh, note it again it ruined his fishing trips deprived him the joy of canoeing boating and swimming so remember to include these three points while you answer the third question in the previous page and the first question in this particular page i hope the idea is clear for you and remember while answering the question in this page not this page in the very next page ah this is the question why was douglas determined to get over his fear of water i hope you have marked that question in that particular question you have to reword these points because of all these reasons he determined to get over his fear of water the other one was the question was what is the after effect and here the question is why he decided to get over his fear of water he wanted to enjoy all these things again and for that he decided to learn swimming i hope the idea is clear for you now we'll continue with the next paragraph okay okay i used every way i knew to overcome this fear but held but it held me firmly in its grip so i tried my level best to overcome the fear that i had why because i want to go for boating i want to go for swimming i want to enjoy canoeing i wanted to do all these things and for that i decided to overcome the fear but no it is still having the control over me finally one october i decided to get an instructor and learn to swim so at last what happened is that he decided to take i mean uh, to learn swimming I went to a pool and practiced five days a week, an hour each day. The instructor put a belt around me, so I decided. I finally decided somehow or the other I'll have to overcome this uh, what handicap of mine. It should never upset me again and again. And for that, what I just did was I just managed to get an instructor, and I, with the help of him. Uh, what happened is that i started practicing swimming there in a pool practice 5 days a week that to per hour okay i mean an hour each day and what the instructor did remember starting from this is the answer of another question okay starting from here this whole paragraph you have a question there uh, in page number 29 okay in page number 29 you have a question the question is this how did the instructor built a swimmer out of douglas hmm? so that particular question these are the points that you have to answer so what the instructor did let us see one by one the instructor put a belt around me so first thing that he did was he arranged a belt around me then a rope attached to the belt went through a pulley that ran on an overhead cable so what happened was that a rope he managed to get a rope and then he attached it to the belt and the rope you know through a pulley the other end was there in the hands of the instructor in that manner he had arranged i hope you uh, got an idea on on how it is hmm? i'm not good in drawing so please excuse so think that this is uh, william douglas he is lying there on the water a belt is being tied over there and a rope is attached and here we have a pulley and the other end of the rope the other end of the rope will be there in the hands of the instructor now the idea the instructor will be standing over here and he'll be having uh, the other end of the rope with him so that he won't once again go deep down into the water that is the idea so he won't be afraid why because whenever he is about to get drowned naturally the instructor can help him by uh, holding the end, uh, i mean anyway he is holding it on the other end isn't it so i hope you got the idea on how the instructor plans to do the training isn't it okay now let's move on a rope attached to the belt went through a pulley that ran on an overhead cable he held on the end of the rope and we went back and forth back and forth across the pool hour after hour day after day week after week so in this manner i practiced i continued practicing my swimming with the help of the instructor having one end of the rope on my belt 
and the other end in the hands of the instructor i moved forward uh, i mean i uh, started practicing i went back and forth back and forth across the pool like that they continued with the practice session on each trip across the pool a bit of panic seized me see that fear was still there okay so at times that uh, fear used to control him seize him means control him each time the instructor relaxed his hold on the rope and i went under some of the old terror returned and my legs froze so whenever the instructor just try to lose the ro rope that is there in his hand what happened is that i'll go down into the pool isn't it so at that time that fear that the thing that happened over there uh, in the ymca pool will return back to me huh? so what happens is that once again huh, i lose my sense at times it was 3 months before the tension began to slack slack means reduce it was only 3 months before that i started uh, what feeling uh, that i have started losing the tension that i had uh, when i am there under the water then he taught me to put my face under the water under water and exhale and to raise my nose and inhale so how to exhale and inhale while being there under the water he taught me that particular technique i repeated the exercise exercise hundreds of time bit by bit i shed part of the panic that sees me when my head went under water so first thing that he tried to overcome was this how to overcome the fear when he put his head under the water so bit by bit slowly he started shedding means trying to avoid uh the panic that had controlled him when he put it his head under the water and what is the next thing adopted by the sir let's see next he held me at the side of the pool and had me kick with my legs so the next thing that they practice what is that he asked him to sit by the side of the pool and asked him to kick the water with his legs it is actually to train his body his legs how to bring the legs under control when he is there inside the water for weeks i did just that at first my legs refused to work even you can try whether your legs will uh, accept your uh, what advice or not you can understand at the beginning no it won't so after continuous practice only actually you can tame it in that way but they gradually relaxed and finally i could command them so very slowly after continuous trial i could make my legs accept my commands got the idea the piece by piece he built a swimmer so in this manner he started building a swimmer in me so remember these until this is the answer of the the question that i have mentioned okay that how did uh how did the swimmer i mean the instructor created a swimmer in William O Douglas that question remember this is the question the second question it is how did the instructor build a swimmer out of douglas so these are the points that you'll have to uh, make use of while you write that particular answer i hope the idea is clear for you maybe i'll repeat it again so what they did was he went to i mean the instructor actually tied a belt around him then a rope was attached to the belt and it went through a pulley that ran on an overhead cable then you could see that one end of the rope was there in the hands of the instructor and each i mean they practiced swimming in that particular way he went back and forth across the pool uh, hour after hour day after day week after week so he practiced like that and then you could see that the instructor whenever he released his hold on the rope uh, the terror it comes back to him but slowly huh, what happened is that he is trying to overcome that fear and we have even seen that the instructor he actually uh, made him learn how to exhale while there under the water and how to inhale so slowly what happened is that he started shedding the fear when he is there under the water and then he made him learn how to manage his legs there while in water isn't it and for that also continuous training is being given and slowly and gradually what happened is that uh piece by piece the instructor was trying to build a swimmer in him i hope the idea is clear and when he had perfected each piece 
he put them together into an integrated whole. Integrated whole in the sense, the instructor made this William O. Douglas an excellent swimmer. Piece by piece, he was correcting all the mistakes of him. In April, he said, now you can swim. Dive off and swim the length of the pool. Crawl stroke. I did. The instructor was finished. So remember, it started in October, isn't it? He decided to learn to swim. Now it's April. Anyway, at that time, what happened is that the instructor told, now he can easily swim. There is no need for any other instructor or any other help. He can swim. He can dive off and swim the length of a pool called crawl stroke. You know the different uh, types of strokes being applied in the swimming. Or maybe I can show you an image for that. See, this is the crawl stroke. The first one crawl stroke, the breast stroke, butterfly stroke, back stroke like that goes different types of uh, strokes in swimming. The ones who have learned swimming better know. For the others, you just need to know there are different ways in which you, I mean, you have different strokes. Okay. I did. The instructor was finished. Instructor was finished means his work is over now. But I was not finished. Even though the instructor has completed his work, it seems as if he was not that much satisfied enough. Uh, maybe, I mean, you know, we all are not that perfect in our works, isn't it? So he taught, taught oh, see, I, I haven't learned swimming like that. I need to learn much more or else I need to undergo much more training. Like that goes the thought of this man. I tried it. I, I swam the length up and down. Tiny vestiges. Vestiges means tiny, small parts. Small parts of the old terror would return. But now I could frown and say to that terror, trying to scare me, uh? see are you trying to scare me? Well, here is to you, look, and off I would go for another length of the pool. So, what happens is that whenever the terror approaches, he questions the terrors and will be, and will be telling, see, have a look, I know, I know, I know to give an answer to you and he'll go for another length of the pool. This went on until July, but I was still not satisfied. So, even this happened, even in the month of June. July. Remember, April, the instructor had already told that he can swim very well. But still, this man was not satisfied at all. I was not sure that all the terror had left. So, I just wanted to test if the terror is still there or not. For that, what he did. So, I went to Lake Wentworth in New Hampshire, dived off a dock at Trix Island and swam two miles across the lake to Stampak Island. So what happened is that he tried different water bodies. He started uh, selecting different water bodies and started swimming over there just to test whether the terror is still there controlling him or not. Hmm? So you could see uh, he went to Lake Wentworth there in New Hampshire and he even dived off a dock at the Trix Island. I mean, he reached the Trix Island and he even managed to swim over there too. And uh, from there he swam uh, to the Stamp Act Island and there he tried the different strokes. Uh, I swam the crawl, breast stroke, side stroke, back stroke. Only once did the terror return. So the terror returned, okay. Uh, only once did the terror return. When I was in the middle of the lake, I put my face under and saw nothing but bottomless water. So I tried to uh, check whether the terror is there in between huh, or not. Huh? So what happened is that I just immersed my head under the water and I could see the bottomless water there. The old sensation returned in miniature. In miniature means in minute, uh, I mean uh, small parts. Okay. In miniature, the old sensation returned. I laughed and said, but remember, I could overcome that fear. What did he comment? Well, Mr. Terror, what do you think you can do to me? It fled and I swam on. Huh? See, come on, Mr. Terror, please don't try to frighten me. Huh? Uh, why, what do you think of me? And then he did for, then he went for one more swimming. Okay, it fled and I swam on. I continued swimming. Yet I had residual doubts. At my first opportunity, I hurried west. Again, he had the doubt. So he thought he'll just continue swimming. Okay. I hurried west, went up to the Teton to Conrad Meadows. So first went to the Teton River and from there to the Conrad Meadows, a farmland there. Then up the Conrad Creek Trail to Mead Glacier 
and camped in the high meadow by the side of the warm lake so he started moving from one a uh, water body to another and in between islands are there peaks are there uh, glaciers there hmm? then the next morning i stripped i stripped here means uh, i removed my clothes and used the swimming suit and then dived into the lake and swam across to the other shore and back just as duck corporan used to do so just as a famous sing, a famous swimmer duck corporan had done the same thing i too did hmm? i started swimming from the uh, one water body to the another i shouted with joy and gilbert Pre peak returned the echo i had conquered my fear of water i was so happy to understand that i could overcome the fear that i had and because of that happiness that happiness came out in this form he just cried out uh, he just shouted out with joy and the gilbert peak was, that was there it actually returned his echo he was so happy and so excited that he shouted uh, with joy and the experience had a deep deep meaning for me as only those who have known the stark terror and conquered it can appreciate and this experience that i had it really had a great impact on me and see the stark terror means the deep terror that a person come across only those people who had undergone the same situation only will understand my feelings the ones who have never uh, come across a situation won't ever be able to com completely understand my feelings in death there is peace there is terror only in the fear of death as roosevelt knew when he said all we have to fear is fear itself hmm? see what his comment is that actually while facing death we need not be afraid at all hmm? you can overcome if you have no fear of death naturally what is death is actually really something a peaceful situation it is not the idea so in death there is peace there is terror only in the fear of death huh? so if you fear death then naturally it is a terrifying situation or else it is really a peaceful one and roosevelt franklin roosevelt might better know uh, when he said this that is all we have to fear is fear itself because i had experienced both the sensation of dying and the terror that fear of it can produce the will to live somehow grew in intensity at last i felt released free to walk the trails and climb the peaks and to brush aside fear so after knowing or else what I, after understanding that i could swim along i mean swim confidently i was so happy and i felt relaxed and i felt released uh, with from all the tensions and from that time you could see uh, he had he could enjoy his walk there in the trails trails is actually the path on the hills okay so children uh, let me continue with what i have done earlier see we couldn't complete discussing of the third question the third question that appears in the last page of your chapter okay so what we have uh, seen maybe we'll uh, just have a brief idea uh, regarding the last part of the lesson there we are coming across this question's answer the question is this how did douglas make sure that he conquered the old terror so you have to understand uh, the points that should be mentioned for this particular question okay i'll just uh, let you know the points that you have to answer for this question even though the instructor so you have to start answering like this even though the instructor told that he has william o douglas is right now a perfect swimmer even though he mentioned so he couldn't uh, what he was not so happy enough hmm? so what he did was he tried he tried swimming in various water bodies hmm? uh and uh, those things are mentioned in especially in the last page of the lesson uh where you could see that he, since he was not satisfied uh, he just wanted to check uh, if uh, everything is fine and for that he went to lake went forth in new hampshire died off a dock at prigs island and swam 2 miles across the lakes to stampack island and then he tried the different strokes uh, crawl stroke breast stroke side stroke back stroke and only once the the terror came back okay did the come back huh? and then he could see that uh, even when he reached the middle of the lake what he did was he just put his face under and uh, checked whether 
the terror once again comes back to him or not. So at that time he is terrorizing that terror with such a question uh, and that, well, Mr. Terror, what do you think you can do to me? So it fled and he continued swimming. So in this manner, he made it sure. And even the next paragraph, you have to use these points too. That is, he went to the Teton, to Conrad Meadows, up the Conrad Creek Trail to the Mead Glacier. Then it's glacier, okay? Uh, the floating icebergs. Hmm? And then uh, there in the, <coughs> he camped over there in the high uh, meadow there, by the side of the warm lake. And then uh, he swam across the, all the other water bodies like that of this duck corporate and he made in this manner he just made it sure that he has overcome that fear so these are the points that you have to answer while you attempt this question that is how did Douglas make sure that he conquered the old terror I hope you got the idea different water bodies are mentioned here and then uh, how he tried in each water body and what is the thing that he did while swimming in between he uh, dipped his face in the water to check whether the old terror will return or not isn't it the, all those things we have already come across uh, those points should be added along with this i hope the idea is clear for you okay now the last part here we have one more question maybe a long answer question you can expect from this the question is this all we have to fear is fear itself. It's told by Franklin Roosevelt, the president. Hmm? So how can you connect this sentence? All we have to fear is fear. Comment on this statement brought by, I mean, commented by Roosevelt based on the chapter Deep Water. If such a question comes up, remember how to quote William O. Douglas's instance. He was really afraid of water, isn't it? Uh, he first he at first he had an aversion towards water because of the incident that happened in while he was three to four year three or four years, and then uh, the second the second incident that is a misadventure that happened to him there at the YMCA pool. That point should also be mentioned and how he decided to overcome that fear. See, because of that fear of water, he uh, couldn't enjoy canoeing, boating, and swimming, isn't it? So those points should be included and then you have to mention how he decided see since he wanted to enjoy all these things he decided to learn swimming and there how uh, he started to getting training under an instructor and how he tried it out how he worked it out in the different water bodies and how he made himself believe that right now he is no longer afraid of water these are the points to be included. Usually it is asked as a, a six mark question. Okay, a six mark questions make a question may come up like that. All we have to fear is fear itself. Uh, I think I have given this question in your, uh, I mean, a note, I mean, questions, seven questions I have sent based on this chapter. One among the questions is this. But it was a short answer question. What I told here right now is most probably it can be a six mark question that can appear from this chapter. Okay, so right now he is free from all sorts of fears. That is the reason why it ends with this statement. He is free to walk the trials and climb the peaks and to brush aside fear. He was so happy that he could uh, feel relaxed. Why? Because right now he is no longer having any sorts of fear towards water. Okay, I hope the idea is clear. And <clears throat> remember the different points that we have learned based on this chapter. The first point is William O. Douglas. His uh, wh what is the uh, what what are the instructions given by the mother uh, regarding the Yakima River? That was the first point that we have discussed. Yakima River is so dangerous. So uh, he she used to update the child with uh, the different cases or else the accidents that happen in the Yakima River. That is the first point that we have learned based on this chapter. Then the second point that we have learned is. His aversion towards water. The third point is, is the misadventure that happened to him and what are the plannings that, had, uh, that he had planned as he was moving down the water. Then whether, whether the plan worked out or not. Those were the instances that we have learned. Then after that how he decided to overcome the fear. Why he decided so? Why? Because he couldn't enjoy fishing, canoeing or bo uh, boating. Isn't it? So what he decided was he'll... Uh, uh, help, with the help of an instructor, he decided to overcome the fear. Hmm? And how the instructor taught, that also we have discussed. 
and uh, a very few of you have messaged me uh, that because of the net issue uh, at times the words were not clear uh, so for their information kindly uh, just watch the youtube channel so that it is recorded and it will be uploaded there so that it will be clear for you and still if you have got any confusions or uh, any sorts of clarifications you need for that you may contact my personal whatsapp number okay then after uh, remember after learning how the instructor taught him uh, how to swim uh, uh, we have seen that this man william o douglas was not that happy enough uh, he was not so sure whether he had shed all the fears that are there in his mind so he tried in different water bodies how he had done that like uh, how an expert swimmer duck copran had tried swimming from one uh, water body to another he too continued the same he too did the same and he checked and made it sure that he has brushed aside all the fears of his and then he's finally quoting the statement all we have to fear is fear itself nothing else need. you need not worry to worry about anything else why because the only thing that we need to fear is fear alone okay so with that the lesson is over uh, we have discussed all the questions with the majority or almost all the questions that we have comes in this lesson and even you remember to answer those seven questions that i have given in your notebook i mean given in the parent app okay